Jesus Christ, why did I just say that? Your hand looks heavy. Can I hold it for you? <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. We talk all the time. All the time. So why the hell am I so nervous? Oh, oh my armpits are sweaty. I hope she doesn't notice that. My palms are drenched and I'm pretty sure I considered backing out of this date like Twelve times already. Oh, it's just a first date. Get over it. You'd think all that time I spent practicing what I'd say to her in front of the mirror would pay off, but here we are now, spouting cheesy pickup lines. Yay. There are better ones I could have picked. Like, uh, uh, do, do you know karate? Because you're <laughs> kicking. Or, uh, are you a broom? Cause you swept me off my feet. <coughs> but no, we just had to go with the hand holding. God, 
fist is closed. She totally won't hold my hand now. Calm down. Calm down. She hasn't left yet, so I should be fine. Right? <laughs> I had the courage to ask her out, so why is it all going to hell now? <laughs> all I wanted was to tell her how much I like her and how much she's meant to me these past few years, but her mouth won't even move to form those words. Uh, she's so pretty, smiling at me like I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Well, what if she doesn't like me back? <laughs> Is she only out here because she felt bad? I, no, 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 no. She told me she's happy to be here like a million times already. Uh, I'm happy too. Ecstatic. Uh, even. Hmm. So just tell her that. Wait. She's... She's reaching for my sweaty hand. She's... She's holding it. She's actually holding it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Say something. Anything. Anything but a pickup line. Say something. Okay. Okay. Here goes nothing. Hey. Uh. Tina? <laughs> if. If you were a Transformer, you'd be Optimus Fine. Oh no. I love a boy who certainly does not love me back. He'd probably even be hesitant to use the word love in the friendship sense. Isn't it sad I can't even be friend-zoned by the one man I ever imagined myself loving? In the abstract, men are nice. In a girl-gets-the-guy-at-the-very-last-second kind of way. Or in the... Oh, it's been him! It's been him all along! How could I have been so blind? Kind of way, too. In a fictional, far-off kind of way. In a not-for-me never for me kind of way too. So I love a boy and he'll never love me back. And I'll spend years trying to build myself the perfect body and the perfect life. So maybe one day he comes back and really regrets everything he's clearly missed out on. But the girls in my books, they don't have to do this, this Reconstruction of Eve and the serpent, standing by the tree of knowledge, just tempted by a life of sins, but decadence. The girls who get loved by boys, they're loved for the space they already occupy. They don't shuffle their feet or laugh too loud at the wrong jokes. They smile without hesitation. And most importantly, <laughs> They don't love boys who can't love them back. Girls like that either choose or they get chosen. But I guess in a way I'm still trying to figure out if what I'm actually feeling is love. I listen to all the songs on the radio and I just wait for something to make sense. I blast Taylor Swift from my headphones and I have a notebook to decipher all of her lyrics like it's just one big game of Clue and I just really, really need one. But, I don't know. But then, I read poetry and I start imagining the soft corners of his lips and that gentle turn of his neck and that lingering sensation of like burning light going through my skin and that's when i know i love a boy who certainly does not love me back and as sad as that is isn't it love that kept jesus christ on the cross and it's love that taylor swift sings about and 
It's love when two strangers brush hands on the street. And it's love right here, right now. Look, I know that boy doesn't love me back and he probably never will, but I've still got love all the same. The world still spins and the breeze, it still blows. And my heart, my heart will beat stronger than before. Love's Diner. I came up with that name, you know? And for good reason too. You see, this isn't your ordinary diner. In fact, you've probably heard your parents talk about how they met in here or how some of your friends found their soulmates after walking through these doors. This place seems to have quite the reputation of having a certain charm on its patrons, like we're literally serving up love in Love's Diner. Every day I get a ton of customers who enter with empty stomachs and leave with filled hearts. As for hopeless romantics, this is the place where they seem to find their better half at the end of their meal. Uh, speaking of hopeless romantics, here's one of them. Kurt Connor, high school teacher and completely drained of love. Looks like I need to refill that. Hey Kurt, what can I get you? Uh. Just the new sandwich I keep hearing about. One lover's choice sandwich coming right up. Oh, and uh, also get a Coke with that. Uh-oh, that can't be good. What? 
Well, if I know you, you always order a milkshake with your meals. The only time you don't is when you're depressed. Everything all right? Oh, uh, yeah, um, just going through a divorce right now. Sorry about that, buddy. You know what? This meal is on the house. Oh, no, Aaron, it, it's all fine. You don't have to make any special treatments to make me feel better. Don't worry about it. You've been my best customer for years now. It's the least I could do since you've always kept my business alive by advertising my food to your friends and family. The meal's on the house. Well, thank you so much. I'm so sorry for being late. My car broke down and I had to take a cab. Mr. Connor? Livy, what are you doing here? I work here now. I figured I should get a weekend job to help pay off my college fund. You guys know each other? Yep. Livy here is one of my drama students. A gifted one, if I may add. Ah, a theater kid, eh? My cousin Dion would love you, Livy. Who? Um, nothing. I'll get your order ready, Kurt. Mr. Connor. I didn't know you eat here. How often do you come? Oh, I've been coming since I was a kid. In fact, my parents met and fell in love at this diner. Some of my best memories happened here too. Like when I was your age, I had my first date here with some girl who I was so happy with. Thing is, I kind of lost contact with her after we both graduated, but I haven't forgotten about her. I still remember her name, Celia. That's weird, that's my mom's name. Plus, she'd always tell me about her wonderful first date here with some guy she used to go out with when she was in high school. All of that happened before she met my dad who then divorced her. Livy, please take this order to table seven. Yes, ma'am. Here you go, Mr. Connor. Enjoy your meal. Oh, wait, Livy. Yeah? Um, The guy your mom dated, uh... Can you tell me a little bit more about him? Well, based on everything mom told me, she and this guy went to my high school. So did I. They were both in the school's drama club. I was the club advisor. And they met when they performed together in Romeo and Juliet. That's when I had my first kiss on stage. And um, did she ever tell you the guy's name? I think it was Kurt. Livy, my first date at this diner was with your mom. She was also the best girlfriend I ever had. Wait, you're my mom's long lost flame? Funny you should say that. Why? Because here she comes. Livy, honey, I came here to see if you made it to work on time and okay. Kurt? Celia, hi. Um, Livy, why don't you wash the dishes back here? I have some things I need to take care of in my office. Yes, ma'am. Aunt Celia, it's been so long. I know. You look great, by the way. How have you been? Oh, uh, just fine. I heard you got married. How's your wife? Oh, uh, well, she left me because she didn't support my profession as a theater teacher at her old school. Oh, I'm so sorry. For what it's worth, you didn't deserve that. You deserve to be with someone who supports your dreams and passions. Well, thank you. And how have you been? Oh, getting by, okay. My husband left me and Livy because he thought we weren't good enough for him. Well, he's an idiot for that. I don't know about the guy, but I think you're the best. Thank you. Tell you what, uh, why don't you join me for a meal? I'll pay for it. That'll be delightful. Hey, Aaron, can I get an extra menu over here? Certainly. Actually, there's no need. I'll just have a lover's choice latte uh, with, with cream, cream and, and a spark sparkle of cinnamon, of cinnamon sprinkles. sprinkles. On the way my favorite drink from the menu just like our first date i know that's why i remembered it oh, celia I'm so glad you still remember me after all these years 
Well, I've missed you so much. Everything hasn't been the same since we lost contact with each other. Then I had Libby. She provides the same amount of sunshine in my life, the way you did when we were together. It's like she came into my life to try to lead me back to you. <laughs> it does feel that way. She came into my class and I thought I saw a bit of you in her. The way she gracefully takes the stage, she must take that from her mother. Here you go, Mom. Thanks, honey. Oh, Kurt, I'm so sorry I have to leave you like this again, but I have to get back to my job. It was very delightful to see you again. Will I see you again? I don't know. With Livy leaving for college in a few weeks, I'm busy packing up to move back with my sister in Vermont. That way Livy can go there on her vacation days. Plus, we don't have many relatives here like we do over in Vermont. Oh. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, Kurt. I wish I could stay. Oh, it's, it's okay. Uh, your happiness and Livy's future is what matters most. Thank you. So, how'd it go? She's gone. Again. And I don't think I'll ever see her again. I didn't even get to tell her everything. How I feel and how I wanted her to stay with me. Hmm. Well, I'm sure you'll get to tell her soon enough. I'm so sorry. I accidentally left my jacket. Kurt, it's now or never. Celia, wait! I should have told you this before we graduated. Ever since we split for college, I've always been thinking about you and how much I really regret ending our relationship. Now, I don't want that to happen again. Kurt, what are you saying? I love you, Celia. I've always loved you since we performed Romeo and Juliet together and when you went to prom, prom with me senior year. Not a day goes by when I'm not thinking about you or how I wished I should have asked you when I had the chance. Ask me what? Celia, will you marry me? Oh, Kurt, yes. <laughs> Livy, darling, come out here and join us. Join you guys in what? Livy, Mr. Connor here and I are getting married. Wait. That means my favorite teacher in the whole world is going to be my new dad? Yay! Libby, honey, Kurt and I are going for a little stroll in the park. You can meet us there when you're done with your shift. Okay. Wait, Celia, what about your work? Oh, screw it. We're getting married. Cheers. Well, I'm going to go finish washing the dishes. Now, all of you may be thinking, another happy ending. Well, believe it or not, my work isn't done yet. Hello? Ah, another familiar face lost into my diner. Hey, I heard you added the new Lover's Choice sandwich to the menu. I always been saying it the best. You heard right. And I also heard this weird thing about your sandwiches being made with love. Well, it's better than using the arrows. Hey, what? Um... Nothing. And I must say, you picked the right time to come in here. Really? Why? Um, excuse me, Miss Saren. I... Oh my gosh. Come! Have a seat, my dear boy. Our lovely waitress here will happily serve you. Hi, uh, Jason. Uh, may I? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Oh, hey, don't I see you at school? You're one of the theater kids, right, Olivia? Um, everyone calls me Livy, but yeah, we have homeroom together. Oh yeah, and weren't you in the school's production of Into the Woods last fall? I was, you saw that? Yeah, and I enjoyed it too. I'm also thinking about auditioning for the upcoming spring musical too. Maybe that way we can perform together. Wow, I never would have guessed you'd be into the arts. Yeah, well, I do have a soft spot for the musical theater. Plus, you were really amazing as Little Red. Really? Everyone said I did a cute performance. Well, I wasn't there when everyone said that, but 
I do think you're pretty cute. Hey, Livy, give this to us. But he hasn't ordered anything yet. I know, but he orders this every time he comes here. And tell him it's from you, personally. Okay. Um, here's a cup of lover's, lover's choice latte. latte. My favorite. How'd you know? Oh, I, I just thought. And speaking of lovers, how are things between you and Kelly? I haven't seen you guys together since you scored the winning touchdown from your last football game. Oh, I broke up with Kelly. I wasn't really happy with our relationship. In fact, I wouldn't even call it that since she basically treated me more like a trophy than a boyfriend. Really? The coolest guy in school doesn't deserve to be treated like that. You deserve a girl who'd love you for you, not for your popularity. Like you, perhaps? <laughs> um. You know, prom's coming up next Saturday and I'd like you to go with me because, well, I really like you. Yes. I mean, yes. Cool. Oh, shoot. I need to get home before nine or else my parents are going to kill me. I'll pick you up on Saturday. Totally. All right, then. Oops. I almost forgot my jacket. I love you. I love you, too. <sighs> Libby, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Really? Go to him, child. Thank you. And there you have it, folks. Another happy ending. Or rather, two of them in Love's Diner. And courtesy of, not to brag, the world's greatest matchmaker, yours truly. Oh, that reminds me. I never got to properly introduce myself. My name's not Aaron. It's Eros with an S. Or as how I'm known in Rome and almost everywhere else, Cupid. I hope you enjoyed our little love story. Now it's time for me to find more hopeless romantics and turn them into, well, romantics. Good night, everyone. I dread the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because I always had different answers. I went on a field trip to a fire department as an elementary student. What do I want to be? Mama, I want to be a firefighter so I can spray the powerful water hose anytime I want. Mama says, all right, Maya. I get out of elementary school and I miss all my teachers. What do I want to be? Mama, I want to be a teacher so I can see the smiles on kids' faces every day. All right, Maya. Middle school. I see the stress in my parents' eyes because of money, mostly. Not that soon after, there's a burglary attempt at my house. Everybody's fine, but what do I want to be? Mama, I want to be a police officer so I can keep harm out of you guys' way. All right, Maya. I watch a movie called Gifted Hands. This guy grows up to be a brain surgeon with huge houses and multiple fancy cars. I thought to myself, he must make a lot of money. Mama, I want to be a neurosurgeon so I, I can help you guys in the future. All right, Maya, my mom says. Then I act in three Shakespeare plays throughout middle school while my mom goes around saying, my baby is going to be a neurosurgeon. What do I want to be? I draw a blank. Should I do what I enjoy or do I fulfill my family's needs? For a while, I answer that golden question, what do I want to be with, I don't know, which scares me because I don't have a plan. So I just avoid it and continue to act. Mom, I don't want to be a doctor, I want to act. I practice that in my head at least 20 more times and I stop looking at my reflection, walk out of the bathroom towards her bedroom door, knock three times, walk in and, Mama, I, think that maybe a neurosurgeon is too much for me. It seems too hard. Maybe just a head nurse or something so I can still take care of you guys in the future. There's a hint of disappointment in her eyes. I walk out before she says anything. 
I got my first lead in the play and it's incredible. I perform on stage with one of the best casts. I've never felt so many different emotions before. I was able to share the story of another person through my voice. I felt the acceleration, relief, and sadness as we all bowed and walked off the stage. I felt the biggest smile on my face. Mama, I want to be an actress. There's silence, and she smiles. All right, Maya. Everything has its season, everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you a rhyme. Cats fit on the windowsill, children fit in the snow. So why do I feel I don't fit in anywhere I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. I've got to find my corner of the sky. Every man has his daydreams. Every man has his goals. People like the way dreams have of sticking to the soul. Thunder clouds have the lightning, nightingales have their song. And don't you see, I want my life to be something more than long. Rivers belong where they can ramble, eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find of the sky. So many men seem destined to settle for something small, but I won't rest until I know I'll have it all. So don't ask where I'm going, just listen when I'm gone. And far away you'll hear me singing softly to the dawn. Rivers belong with Eagles belong where they can fly. 